thank you all for coming out today. We really appreciate the, uh, the interest in this topic. This is a kind of new and exciting partnership between us and CityWorks. So we'll start off just with a quick agenda here. Uh, we're going to go through uh, a little bit about who we are, and then we'll talk about basic city works for electric and gas. Uh, certainly applies to water as well. Uh, dive into our workforce management product. This is a work management product, and then actually save some time at the end there for a demonstration. So with that, my name is Sky Perry. Uh, I am a founder and the uh, president over at SSP, but I also act as a principal consultant. And that's a role I really treasure. I get to go out and talk with a lot of customers and learn about the workflows that they implement, uh, et cetera. I've been doing uh, this uh, electric and gas water work for about uh, 16, 17 years now. Uh, new to the CityWorks family in the last year, but excited to be there. Great. Thanks, Guy. And my name is Ryan Potts. I'm a consultant, senior consultant with uh, SSP Innovations as well. Got about eight years of experience in the utility and telecommunications GIS field. And I'm also new to the CityWorks family, just like Sky. All right, so just a quick bit about who we are, since we are kind of new to the family, as we mentioned. Uh, we're here today to talk about our utility and work management product, which is workforce management. Uh, it's a, we're a 13-year-old company founded in 2003. We work exclusively in the lower 48 right now. We'd love to get to Hawaii and Alaska, but kind of covering there. 100% uh, of our clients have a Esri-based GIS, and uh, we've been working extensively there alongside the platform, ArcGIS Online and Portal. We've won back-to-back uh, -back partner awards for uh, web GIS within the Esri community. So it's a really exciting opportunity to then come in with another platinum partner on the, uh, the CityWorks side. So we began as a services company, evolved into products, and we're here today talking about our work management product. And then as we noted, recently joined with CityWorks. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan to take us through some of the background on CityWorks integration in general. Great, thanks Guy. Um, so I think I'm gonna start off my part of the presentation with a little bit of an audience participation piece. Uh, how many of you uh, in the organizations that you're in uh, deliver electric or natural gas or maybe even broadband services uh, to your customers? Raise a hand. Awesome. That's, that's quite a few, actually. And how many of you were able to make it to the plenary last night or yesterday? Great. Yeah, so um, we had a couple slides put together uh, around uh, evangelizing electric and gas for, for the CityWorks community. But as I was uh, watching the plenary yesterday and thinking about what Brian and David talked about, there were a lot of really key themes that they had that I wanted to highlight because I think they tied very well into the presentation that we had outlined for you all today. So the first main uh, point that I wanted to make was, and sort of the theme that they had, was around smart communities through technology. So um, natural gas and electric utilities uh, I feel like they're very large stakeholders in the smart communities through technology movement. The idea that we all want to have great public services, that we all want to have uh, efficient communities for, for us to live in, and I think that's a really important theme here that we see at the CityWorks conference. And you saw that in the theme throughout the, the day yesterday where you had smart communities today uh, and in the future. So we saw those slides throughout the presentation. We also saw a theme around being GIS-centric. The concept of a single asset repository is foundational for a lot of our organizations with the idea that we also want to know where your infrastructure is, the critical places and their characteristics, and respond to those events. So something that uh, being GIS centric and having a lot of your assets within the GIS being able to e be easily accessed is something that we see a lot in the electric and natural gas uh, utilities as well. And then finally, David's great keynote talked about the workflow processes that we see in the utility industry all the time around plan, design, build, and then ultimately operate uh, those networks. So uh, Sky's going to get into a little bit more around that particular workflow and the, the workforce management system that we have, but that's really a key theme. That last theme is kind of a key that, uh, theme that is uh, throughout our presentation. So like I mentioned, Electric and natural gas utilities have been using GIS, specifically the Esri platform, uh, to manage their networks for quite a long time. They're documenting where those assets are. They're even documenting the network model uh, for, let's say, phasing or feeder management on the electric side, maybe um, uh, pressure systems on the gas side. They're doing graphic work design within the GIS. So placing, maybe for a new subdivision, how you're going to provide service to them, compatible units, things of that nature. And then once that gets into the asset repository, they're using extension tools to maybe perform outage management to see where, if you have customers that call in that are out of power, maybe do some analysis on that network to determine what fuse or what transformer may be out and other customers that may uh, not be uh, seeing service. 
So really the idea of being GIS centric specifically on the Esri platform for utilities is something that's been done for, for quite a while. And we see that in this community is that GIS is really critical for making those impactful decisions and analyzing that network. Very similar to what we've seen maybe the other commodities that CityWorks has historically uh, provided uh, within, within their community. Let's say the stormwater or the wastewater uh, types of networks. So that's when we looked at CityWorks and we really saw Given that this is a very GIS-centric in industry, there may be a lot of opportunities to extend the CityWorks capabilities to utilities to maybe provide those additional values that CityWorks offers on top of that GIS-centric platform that utilities are very common uh, or, or have, have known for quite a long time. So the other key diagram or maybe key theme that we saw throughout the presentation yesterday uh, was, was this architecture diagram that uh, Brian sort of laid out throughout many different slides. But I'd like to say if you look in the upper right and it says the GIS-centric platform for public asset management, you can almost cross out public asset management and put utilities or maybe put communication service providers because we're seeing these similar themes in the utility clients that we serve on a daily basis. They're using the GIS as their system of record for their authori authoritative data and then they're extending that data throughout the organization by creating a system of engagement. This is deploying a web portal, maybe it's, or a web GIS portal, maybe it's a portal for ArcGIS or ArcGIS Online, uh, creating uh, web maps, creating web applications, so, uh, building out the model organizations and solution templates that Esri provides, all to expand this data throughout the organization, but that's dependent upon that single GIS-centric system of record for their network assets. And they're also extending into a system of insight as well, performing analysis and other capabilities to be more proactive about monitoring and managing uh, their network as well. So that's where we see CityWorks and sort of the themes that they've supported in other industries can really help out the, the electric utilities and the natural gas utilities as well. And if we think about David's keynote, and the concept around plan, design, build, and then operate. Uh, when we sort of looked at CityWorks and how it might fit well with the utility industry, we really saw it was very strong around the, um, you know, the end of the build process and then ultimate into the operating of that particular network. But when we look at utilities, there's also quite a bit of process that happens in the planning and the design stage. You're getting a request to provide new service, you're doing maybe an estimate or a graphic work design around that request for new service. Typically that has compatible units, material, equipment, and labor associated with that. So from our utility background, we saw an opportunity to maybe augment or extend the capabilities that CityWorks provides with some other tools that are pretty common within the utility industry uh, up to this point. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Sky to talk about that in a bit more detail. Great. Thanks, Ryan. It's interesting when we were approached by CityWorks to sort of partner up on this because I thought they were competitors in this area of work management. But the leadership team at CityWorks was really great to work with. George Mustaf is kind of leading that group to say, hey, we really aren't competitive. Once we looked at each other's solutions, it was very complimentary. So it's helpful to go back and look at the definition of work management versus asset management. This is straight from Gartner. So work management is a set of software products and services that apply workflow structure to the movement of information as well as the interaction of business processes and human worker processes that generate the information. Work management streamlines and transforms crucial business processes and thus can improve results and performance. So definitely some tie-ins to the asset management side, but what we really see, and you're going to see here, is that we focus in on the workflow quite heavily, as well as the design stage from David's pitch yesterday. So we're talking about asset construction in most cases, capital design, your capital programs each year. Certainly we can handle maintenance, but as we look at tying together, CityWorks does that amazingly well. And I know most of you are using the inspection maintenance programs within CityWorks. So we say let it, let it live there if you're going to integrate. Let's so kind of look at the areas of work management, the areas of need. You see up top project organization, but this starts before the assets are even installed in the field, of course, on the design side. And that leads to project estimating. Scheduling the jobs in the field alongside the crews. Project task management, obviously we have to do that on the construction side and then on the as building side, capturing that at CityWorks works well. Project reporting, field crew coordination, and as built recording is often an area we can add some value to. Now if we look at the external side of work management, where does work management tie to within your organization? Work origination, customer payments, 
accounting for sure, project reporting, material management, field crews, graphic work design, or GIS, and finally asset management. So as we explored this with the city work staff, we saw several areas that we could work together on. Obviously, asset management is heavily in the city works court. So time back in there, handing off the assets that are constructed, easy check. The next was material management. Talking about the city works storeroom was a really easy uh, 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 place that we could integrate design materials into the storeroom to reserve those materials against the work order. And finally, project reporting capturing both the estimated and the actual costs, reporting on those, also another area that works very well together. So let's talk a little bit about what we're showing here today. It's called SSP Workforce Management. It's a product we built out, uh, originally released in 2010, so it's become much more mature. Installed at several utilities, and again, originally intended for the, maybe the smaller utilities in the country, but we've recently, over the last two years, been working with SCANA. SCANA, if anybody knows SCANA, uh, they're a tier one, over a million meter utility out in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. So they've really helped to take this to the next level of making a large scale system. So one of the first times I want to talk about is what we call resources, but it's what CityWorks calls ELM. And if you're familiar with ELM, equipment, labor, material, we might call it MEL, M-E-L, uh, but the same concept, the same building blocks. So you can see on the left I've got a piece of material using this storeroom item number. You may already be managing this inside of CityWorks today. So we're going to have those synchronized. Uh, if CityWorks is your system of record, great. We want to be a slave to that system and bring that data in. Equipment and labor, very similar. One key difference, though, between CityWorks management of equipment and labor and SSP's management is that on the design side, we don't know which resource, meaning John Doe, the field uh, crew foreman, we don't know he's going to be working which job. So we're using a role-based architecture. So we know that we're assigning a generic crew foreman but in actuality, when the job is performed, it's going to be a specific individual. Same thing with the equipment, right? We're assigning a bucket truck versus bucket truck one, two, three. So we're going to see these resources. I'm not going to cover too much of the demo based on time, but know that we have these building blocks inside of our system that match up identically to city. The next piece that we really have a lot of value, and this is maybe less on the water side, but we have a number of water utilities that use compatible units as well. Very heavy on the electric and gas side. At the simplest level, a compatible unit is something that aggregates, an entity that aggregates the equipment, material, and labor into a single code. And this is really allowing your design side to be much more effective. So it's kind of hard to see probably on the screen, but up top I've got an OH45 code. Very simple code. Within the bottom section there, we have material, which is a single piece of storeroom material, several pieces of equipment tied in with hours, and then finally labor at the bottom uh, that utilizes hours per roll. A quick show of hands, does anybody use compatible units in the room here today? Are you guys familiar with this concept? Not as much? A couple, okay. So this is really a way to optimize this. So now if I want to design the placement of an OH45, or it could be a water valve or a gas reg station, I can simply put in a single code and it brings all of that component material, equipment and labor, into the design side and I have an immediate cost that I can pass back to the developer. Even going to a higher level, we now go down and break down those CUs with quick ways to enhance the labor and equipment cost around these. So this is what we call extension attributes. Basically means if you're going to hire a contractor to do the labor versus an internal resource, maybe you're going to add an estimate 50% increase to the bid. And again, if you're passing it back to a developer or a customer, that's important. Uh, if you're going to work a job in the electric context and the job's going to be worked hot, meaning energized, a lot more safety issues, there's a lot more precautions, that adds additional cost. So now we can apply these things either at the entire job level or at the individual location level on the job to increase that cost. And then finally, at the larger of the utilities, they're all using this concept of macro uh, units. And this is basically taking multiple compatible units an entire regulator station on the gas side that has many different compatible units for a, different fittings and different valves, different pipes, and rolling those together into a macro side. So this gets another roll-up level. So we have a hierarchy effectively. At the most basic level, it is a material, equipment, and labor, ties to city works. But we can roll those up to various hierarchy levels within our system. So imagine we're synchronizing that data over, building the hierarchy on our side. So life cycle management, I mentioned workflow. CityWorks obviously has tasks and components that go into that direction, but we are very focused on taking a job from the work origination all the way through the completion of that work and the handoffs of CityWorks. And we kind of guide the user, if you will, through that process. So initiation planning, approval, actual construction, getting the as built in, and finally closing out that job. One other key area aside from workflow is that we handle multiple estimates. So if you ever have to design a job where you have maybe two different paths, 
two different sets of material, uh, two different factors that go into the bid. We can manage those multiple estimates, three, four, five even, and allow you to get individual costs per job that then drive the actual design you pass back, and then you can approve one of those designs to proceed forward in the workflow. And then finally, we have an as-built structure. Now, I'll explain why that's a little bit different, because we're managing two work locations on a map. So if you're thinking about a geocentric design process, again, the assets don't exist yet, so CityWorks doesn't know about them, but we call out locations on the map. These are locations where a new water valve might be installed, where water main would be installed, new services, you get the idea there. We can then as-built that same component in that structure and pass those as-built over to City. So very configurable workflow, I'll go into this, but very city works like in the fact that we can create workflow and manage it all through our web user interface. Talked about managing uh, multiple estimates already. Real quickly, I'm just going through this diagram here, telling you where we tie in the city works. You see our SSP work management system on the left. You see our city works component on the right. First part is that sink of the elm, the equipment, labor, and material. We're totally happy to have your uh, system of record in either location, but we want these synchronized so that they work fully together. So now we get into the work process, the workflow. So work request initiation, we're going to call it a work request on our side versus a work order on the city work side. A work request may become a work order, but it doesn't have to. So work request initiation would come into our system. This is the developer calling. I need 15 new services in this subdivision. We would then proceed with design estimating. You could absolutely use raw material within our system, but you can use the compatible unit approach, which makes it, as I noted earlier, a lot faster and a lot easier to create quick designs. Multiple estimates there. We would then go through an approval process, and this differs by utilities, maybe sometimes based on the price of the job. Everything under 15,000 can just be approved by the design engineer, 50,000 is up to a supervisor, maybe if it's over 50, it has to go to the, uh, the operational manager. So at this point in time, once it's been approved, we're going to create a CityWorks work order. And that's a collection point where we can now start the construction process. And we're going to load the estimated side within Elm with the equipment, labor, and material that's been designed within our system. We then can go through ordering materials on our end. This could go to uh, an external storeroom, or if you have storeroom utilized in CityWorks, great location where we can reserve those materials directly against the work order. Assigned to approve. We could use your crews to city works. We also integrate to others like Click Software, uh, who do a lot of crew optimization, things like that. So very open APIs on our end, similar to the city works uh, metallic. So I mentioned this is a little different. We would capture aspects on our side, and I'll show you why it's different in the demo here, but really around that work location driven design. And then we'll apply the GIS updates. Now, in new construction, the GIS updates based on your as builts, whether you design a GIS or maybe you design in CAD, wherever you design. That's the first time those assets are posted up in GIS. And right, we know CityWorks is asset or, or GIS centric, so that's the first time that those assets can be consumed within CityWorks. So we're going to automatically register those assets off the map, as well as the as built materials over into CityWorks with just a single click. So saving a lot of time. And then finally, we typically do not collect actual costs on the equipment and labor side, but CityWorks does that really well off of crews. So we'll let them continue to do that merge together the material, the equipment, and labor costs for the job. And finally, we'll be closing out the job with one simple integration there that we can pass that final workflow. So hopefully this diagram kind of shows you the different tie points. But it's a little bit easier to see it in action as opposed to just uh, showing you the example here. So I'll jump over and actually jump into a demo here and show you some of these tie points. All right, so let's flip over to our web-based interface. So we are web-based just like CityWorks uh, and tying in together with the APIs that we're all very familiar with on the CityWorks side, same, same component on our, on our end. So we see here is WFM, which is workforce management again. First thing to note is that I am logged in as myself and I am an administrator in the application. Now we're very role-based like CityWorks, so typically I wouldn't also be the crew supervisor and the, the, uh, the as-built person, but you know, we can create those same roles tied into your CityWorks roles if desired or on our own. So I'm going to kind of skip over some of the background, the building blocks that I would often show to kind of focus in on the workflow side. So know that we have those material, equipment, and labor components. In fact, maybe I'll just bring up one of those to show you a compatible unit since that's a new concept to some here. And bear with us, we're connecting back to the back office on this. So I'm going to come in on the construction standard screen. I'll load an existing construction standard. I'll just bring up, uh, let's say an OH 1600. So I happen to know, and I could go search with the search button if I didn't know the code, but this is a three-phase inline electric example. So this is a framing, one of the pieces that you connect to a pole to hold the wires. 
So I've got some basic information up top, but as I scroll down, you can see that I have a number of different materials. And if I just sort of scroll over this, you see that I've got a lot of different materials down at the bolt level, the washer level, etc., all that have to be compiled into this compatible unit. So now I don't have to add those individual materials and the quantities to the job. I just add an OH45 and I get them all. Note, let's pop over here, you can see the quantities here, three of these, two of these, nine of these. So it's much quicker to use them in a compatible unit context. Scrolling down a little bit further, I have the same concept there with the equipment and then the labor as well. So again, rolling that all down, I'll be able to add an OH45 to the job and get to it very quickly. So let's just jump into a creation process here. So again, work request, this is before a work order would ever be established on the design side, may or may not be approved to become... Oh, oh antivirus, good. We're safe at least. All right, so we're going to go in and we're going to select some basic information about the job. I'm going to do an overhead residential job and I'm showing an electric example here today. I'll go and choose electric therefore and a budget class code. This is giving me an initial charge code within the organization, could right, tie right back to a, a city works project as an example, but it's where I'm going to charge my time as I bid this job out. And note that now I'm in a work request, however it's not been saved. Let me just get my mouse in the right place here. Not quite zooming right, that's okay. In the upper right here you can see that the status is new unsaved and that's because we haven't saved this into the system as of yet. So I'll go and assign a few other fields here within priority one with 30 days is fine. Uh, we've got a developer that called in Roan Hills, quick phone number, et cetera, you get the idea. Now an important tie into CityWorks is always that address since we're so geocentric over on the CityWorks side. So I'm going to put in an address of 4499, this is going to be on Roan Drive. And this is where our demo data set is down in Garland, Texas and 75043. So this would be information I would take from the caller on the phone from the developer. We're just going to say new service to subdivision. So some very basic information about the job. I'll save that into the system. So this is creating the job again, not creating it in CityWorks as of yet, just on our end uh, as far as creating a new work request. So you see here I've got a new estimate new in the upper right which is my status of the job, forcing that workflow. You see all the information here? Now, not unlike CityWorks, once the job is saved, I have this concept of panels where I can add attachments, I can add comments, some overlap there, of course, but again, we're in different systems, those could be synchronized, mind you. But within our job here, the key area I want to focus in is this, uh, this select task area. I'm just going to kind of position here. What you're seeing here in this area is what I can do to this job based on the current status of the job and who I am in the system. So if I'm just a customer service rep, maybe I can just assign it to an engineer. If I'm also an engineer, I can send it over to the graphic design tool. Now anytime you see these stars in our system, we just use those to key in that I'm an administrator and I can do these administrative type functions, but the end user would only see potentially these two options, so it's guiding them through the next steps in their workflow. So for the purposes of this job, I'll quickly just show you some manual estimating on our estimate worksheet here. So again, we have multiple estimates for the job, I'll just put in maybe a manual estimate. Now as I come down here, this is my estimate worksheet, my, my almost like kind of spreadsheet view but it's in a web tool. So I can go ahead and click start editing. If I'm doing a very simple job, I can add work locations, meaning locations to, uh, in the field where this work will be installed or I can just leave it as is. But it's very easy to add units and you can just see here as this comes up that I can come in and we can do an installation. I'll go ahead and use that same OH45, which is a wood pole and quickly save that. Now as I save an OH45, we've already talked about it, saving the material, the equipment and labor for it just that easily and you can see here that it's driving the cost. So this cost for this is $1,998 and up top it's broken down by the raw total, the materials and the equipment and labor all broken out. So just that quickly I have the job. I could add a new removal for doing a pole replacement, do a very quick non-graphical editing. I can always click on that CU code to see the detail of the resources, meaning that equipment, material, and labor that's occurring behind the scenes. So a very quick way to estimate once you get, uh, start using compatible units and become uh, familiar with them within your organization. But more importantly, we're geocentric folks here obviously, uh, we're not going to show you much on the graphic design side, but we'll kind of tie in today to kind of talk about what that might look like. So on my work request, if we were integrating to an external work uh, design system within GIS, could be desktop based or there's a number of new ones coming out these days that we'll be working with uh, soon that are web based or even uh, runtime based on the Esri side, but we would take this design and hand it off to an external tool that could do the GIS design. So you can see that's just sent that over to an external engine and this job will refresh and we'll see the status in the upper right update that it's now in graphic design. This changes my options here for what I can do next. So I'm going to kind of skip past it in the nature of time here to kind of move forward, 
But if I come down and just say, okay, we did an attachment, I've done a, a pre-done a graphic design job here, and I'm gonna attach something that's going to be the job print. And I'll go and just select a file here that I've designed over an arc map already. So a quick GIS design print, this is just a PDF I'm adding at this point in time, but this is a design print that might come out of any system, could be paper, could be AutoCAD, etc. The key, key thing I want to show here is that we've got work locations, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the areas on the map where the work will occur. Our crew would use this to effectively install, remove work at those locations. The coloration of green here is actually showing an installation color. So you can see we're kind of tapping off here electric contacts. If we don't have electric users, or as much in the room, but we're putting a new line in an overhead extension here with poles, conductor, transformers to energize some of this new area in the subdivision up top here. So we've got some overhead and underground. So just kind of keep that and I'll flip back to it as needed to put it in context of this design. So imagine we designed that in a graphic tool. We have the APIs to allow that same graphic design to be back, passed back to us. And most of the graphic design tools are compatible unit based, so it's a very good fit, but we can do raw material as well. And I'm going to fire a task we've created for the demonstration here today called load graphic design into the estimate. So this is effectively opening that API side to bring in an external graphic design corresponding to that work print I just showed you. So as this comes back, we'll see a couple things happen. We'll have an advancement in status, noting that the job is now ready for approval. You'll see that up here, graphic design complete. And now if I flip back to my estimate worksheet, I should have an additional design estimate attached to it. So I still have my manual estimate that I had there previously, that I did the manual uh, installation of one pole, but now I have a default external design estimate that's come back in from a graphic work design tool. And we'll go and explore what that looks like. So if you remember, I had six work locations on my design print, that PDF. And now I have six work locations loaded here. If I go into that number one, corresponding again to the number one tap point here on the bottom of this map, you can see I have an installation of some conductor for 545 feet, as well as a fuse. Now again, I can click any one of these and it's got the individual material, equipment, and labor tied in behind, driving that cost. I have a cost per each individual work location. Uh, I have a cost per each individual CU, the compatible unit, and then a total cost for the job. So a very easy way to get these costs brought in uh, into the system. Now if you have any miscellaneous items, this could be a contract cost, maybe a street cut, something like that, an external vendor, we can add those in too into this miscellaneous items section. But for our purposes today, we'll kind of continue forward in the workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and you see my choices have changed here now that I've changed statuses. So I can submit this for engineering approval. And as you might guess, I'll be approving this design myself. In the real world, of course, there'll be a different design engineer or approver in the system that might approve the job. But we'll keep it rolling here today. So I'll assign it to myself for approval purposes. Key thing here is assigning it. It's notifying me via email or other uh, uh, notification means. And it's changed the status to pending design approval. I'll go ahead now and approve this design. So I'm now saying, okay, I could obviously, and you see down in the drop down, I could reject it and send it back to the engineer if I needed more detail, more information, but I'll approve this design for the purposes of moving forward. So again, this is that workflow part we're talking about. We're guiding the users through the workflow of the job. And it's a very important step as we, uh, especially on the design side, because there's a lot of approval in a right uh, mode that it has to go through. So now we're in estimate approved. Again, we have not touched CityWorks to be clear other than using the material equipment and labor with the tie over. But this is a great time if you've got an approved job that I want to select create the CityWorks work order within our system. And as you might guess, this is now going to tie into CityWorks. It's going to create a brand new work order and it's going to associate the estimated material equipment and labor. So CityWorks doesn't care about work locations. It doesn't care about compatible units. It cares about the individual components that make up that job. So this is firing off into CityWorks and you can see we've now moved status to dedicate materials. Before I go much further, I want to point out that we've added a new attachment type, which is called CityWorks work orders. And I have a hyperlink and it created a new work order 2393 within the system. And that's now linked the jobs between the two systems. So let's go and take a look at that over in CityWorks. So I'll click that hyperlink, should bring up my CityWorks system. It's on a different server, should come up, I've got to log in. running very speedily. Oh, it, it logged me in, great. Okay, so uh, no smoke and mirrors here. This is actually created the work request number 2393. Uh, it's dropped into a category. I've got all my information around the creation of that job, as well as a projected start and finish based on the dates I just put in. But you can see this exact time that we just plugged this in within the presentation here. Uh, you note that location information here on the CityWorks side. Being geocentric, of course, we can come in and uh, 
uh, geolocate against the Esri map and bring the coordinates in. We get a pretty close match there we'll take and we now get our coordinates. Uh, note there are no assets though. And this is kind of a key point. There's no assets here in this section of the assets on the screen because there's no assets created in the public GIS that could be associated to the work order yet. They have not been constructed. Now the next kind of important thing, I guess let me want to show one more area down here. We've created some custom fields. It's not going to come up with my zoom here, but at the very bottom, hopefully you can kind of see that we've got a WFM integration, which is tying back to that 97351 job. And if I flip back over, it is 97351. So we've tied those jobs in both directions together. So the work request has now become a work order, if you will, and it provides a hyperlink that I could tie back between the systems. So very integrated there. Final piece here is that I can flip into things like my material. And of course, I don't know how many of you use the estimated side of the material today, but all that raw material, and you can see there's quite a lot of entries here, have all come in from the design side. So I designed with compatible units, but it's put the raw material into the job. I had the same components available to me on, let's say, the equipment side. And again, just focusing is specifically that we're talking about the estimated side of the job. If I go actual, there's no cost associated. The job has not been performed. But we're able to get those individual material, equipment, and labor components brought in. CityWorks is now working directly with our external design system. So let's go down our workflow, and our next component would be order, order and dedicate materials. So this is a great opportunity where we can, again, integrate into storeroom or to an external system, even as simple as sending an email to the storeroom. We have some simple folks uh, who just get an email uh, basically with the material request for the job. But I'll put in a full order here. We'll make this a routine standard order. And we'll say we want the materials delivered by the 19th of December. So in a couple weeks, we want it dock one, shed number one. So if we're going to storeroom, this would then be reserving those materials directly in CityWorks storeroom against the work order. Uh, whatever process you have, we're able to touch into. We've done, you know, five, six, seven of these different integrations between different processes around material reservation. So again, advanced status on our side, and we're able to come back once this refreshes here and tie this in to releasing this to construction. It's ready for operation. So our next step would be assigning this to a crew kind of just fire that off. Again, we can tie into crews that exist within CityWorks if desired or another external module, or you can manage the crews directly in our system. So that fired off. The final thing I want to show there is released to construction is now our status. So this job has now been issued into the field and a crew would be using the components of our estimate. Let's kind of show that here. We have all those work location based compatible units or raw materials that the crews understand associated then with an attachment which is that GIS design print that I showed earlier. And if you combine those two pieces of information, the crew has exactly what they need to install this in the field. They know where to install it and what to install in a specific location. So you imagine that goes through. The crew foreman's now coming into the system. He's able to complete the as-builds. Now you could absolutely put your as-built material directly into CityWorks, but we, of course, want to enable that in a slightly different process. The key difference is that we're going to still have this component here where it's managed by work location. So I know that at work location six, these were the estimated materials. But notice that my as-built quantities are set to nothing. So I need to go through this process and confirm these. So I can come and say, okay, for this piece of secondary, this could be a gas service, electric service, whatever, we actually use 75 feet as opposed to the 60 feet. So as I confirm that, it's now saving that in. And now I have an estimated quantity of 60 and an as-built quantity of 75. So we're tracking both of those. It's just a little bit easier to do this. So I'm just going to put one more in here on that big run here just to get some cost difference. So on that big run of primary, we had 545 feet. I'll put 700 actual feet in there. So I can confirm all of these individually, and that might take some time, but I can also confirm them all at the same time. Note that if I installed additional material or addition, uh, additional compatible units, I can enter them at this time as well. Let's say I put in a street light at that same tap pole location, and I could come in and, and if I know the code directly, or I could search for it once again, grab an OH-1000, that's a 100-watt uh, HPS, and save that in, and note that that has now been added here to my design. So it was not estimated at all, but it's now been as built uh, within the work order. So for the purposes here, I'm going to confirm the rest of these. I could go through them all, of course, that would take a little bit of time here, but we'll confirm these. So this is effectively setting the as-built quantity equal to the estimated quantity for all other materials, and you see the check marks are now applied for all of these individual compatible units. Now, same component applies here in that each compatible unit, if I open them up, has underlying uh, material, equipment, and labor. So this has confirmed the quantity here for this 28009 so we're going to wrap up this job. The, the work was completed by my family crew, and that's the crew Perry. My kids laugh at the joke, at least. 
I'll come down, we're completed on, we'll just go ahead and feed this out into the future a little bit, maybe the 23rd of December, just in time for Christmas. And we'll just put a complete as designed, new street light at work location one, something simple like that. So I'll submit these as-built into our system. Again, this is saving all that material side. Again, to be clear, the one area we're not touching on is equipment and labor will allow that to come through on the city work side. So the save successful, we'll bring that in. And our final sort of touch point here in the workflow, aside from closing, is to hand off these as built over to the city works system. And again, we're gonna do that with a single click as opposed to having to put all this information in manually. So we drop this down, we'll go ahead and send this as built over to city works. You can see that task ready to go here. And this will do a few things to the job. It'll first set it to field complete. Let's come back from the field side. It'll then also add all of the actual quantities for the individual materials, including that extra street light, will be imported into CityWorks. This is also the time in the job I should mention that the uh, GIS records would be as built and posted. So the final really important piece that we're sending over is grabbing all those assets off the map, the entity IDs, if you're familiar with that term in CityWorks, and we're passing those to CityWorks as well, completing that registration. So I use my quick link down here once again and open up that CityWorks work order. 2393. And we'll check out a few things that have actually changed over here. First off, my actual finish has been updated with the date. My status is now field complete. Over on the right hand side, you now see all those assets. So these are assets that are now as built in the GIS and through the services we've tied them into the individual types of assets as well as the asset UIDs have been tied in to register those assets with the job. Now if I take that a step further in CityWorks and open up my map, Get that going on that in there. And of course I can select all these records and we'll just use the out of the box highlight selection uh, on the map. See this should zoom in, select our assets that have now been as built and you'll see that this should very closely match. Just minimize that so we can see a little bit more of the map. The design jobs, these are now as built assets. They're registered with the actual work order in CityWorks. And again, CityWorks is great for asset maintenance, asset inspection. So we'll now hand these assets off and let them be controlled, but they will always be affiliated with this work order automatically uh, via our system so that we start the life cycle at that point in time. Final piece I kind of want to show over here is that we did get a as built material cost but we didn't get the labor equipment because I mentioned that wasn't going to come in. So let me just show that a little bit further on the Elm side. Hopefully you guys are using Elm. It's a pretty cool tool. I quite like it. If I go into Elm and go down to the existing cost, you can see all the material has come in. I'll zoom in a little bit. All the material has been registered with the assets and the asset types, but it's been done automatically via that integration over to our side. I don't have to manually input any of that information. It's already put in there. You can see I have 14 pages of information around the assets that were as built and the individual materials that were applied. But I don't have any labor or equipment. So I'll very quickly kind of go in here. I'll add costs through Elm and I'm going to grab that same crew Perry. And uh, we'll put in some hours here, 100 hours for uh, Dean, uh, 30 hours for my son Josh, and another 100 hours for Shauna. Uh, on the crew side, we've got all of the components they have within that crew, all the equipment components. And we'll add in just to add some cost quickly, some hours for each. So I'm just going to put 20 hours in for each piece of equipment. Obviously not quite a real case, but it's a quick way to put some cost into the job. So I'll save that in on the Elm side. Everything looks good there. I'll come back one more time here, save that work order. Note that I now have a fully fleshed out labor equipment, material, and total work order cost. So I've combined the two systems very well. It's come back together. And my favorite kind of view that I like in here, and I'm on a preview version of uh, CityWorks, so there's a, a small bug here, but is this cost summary. I don't know if you guys use this, but it shows you the actual labor, estimated labor, actual equipment, estimated, etc., on both sides of the house. And then at the very bottom of the screen, it actually comes in and shows you the comparison. So you can see we estimated the job here at $32,000. We came in at $27,000 and we came in a little bit under budget, which is a great thing. But the key point is getting to this point in this workflow is a very easy process all the way from work and origination on the work request side through to the as built information here inside of CityWorks. Last but not least, we want to close this job out. Pretty easy via the APIs on CityWorks. We'll close the job in our system. Simply send that information over one more time to the CityWorks work order and that job will be automatically closed on that end. So we'll kind of leave that there. And hopefully that demonstration kind of clarifies those touch points between our design side and the as building side on the CityWorks side. So we've hit all those via the APIs. Great to work with a partner like CityWorks who's so open with their APIs and allows us to kind of bring that information in very easily.
So with that, we're going to open up. We only have uh, about two minutes, three minutes left. Uh, any questions about the process or how the systems work together? Question in the back. Inside of CityWorks? Yeah. So the question was, could we create a project around the actual work request? And we have a project module on our side. I'm obviously kind of not focusing on it because CityWorks does that well too. Absolutely is the short answer. We could create uh, on the CityWorks side the project infrastructure. And a project, again, might tie together multiple work requests, multiple phases, or even gas, electric, and water might come together under a single project. So the short answer is yes, absolutely, on either side, really. Any other questions? One more? We've talked about it. Uh, the service request could come in and we're obviously kind of doing the same concept of a service request or work request on our side. Uh, so we could absolutely do that if there's added benefit. However, in this context, as we explored it with uh, the CityWorks folks, uh, we kind of said, hey, that process and workflow is already established on our side and is maintained there for historical purposes. Might as well let it do it because we kind of handle that design process a little bit more smoothly. But yeah, we can absolutely duplicate that entity over into CityWorks. Great question. We're kind of limited on time. The question is, there, is there a way to capture an as-built drawing where maybe there was maybe significant changes? We had to go around a tree. We had to build something differently. And we would typically show an as-built drawing being loaded in at that stage, too. We kind of glossed over it today. Uh, whether that's done as you as-built in the GIS, you kick out another PDF, or if you're using a graphic design tool, uh, there's several out there, that if you designed it in GIS and then just updated it when it was as-built. Either way, you're, you're spot on. We would like to attach the print at the as-built time so we have both the design side and the as-built side for comparison later on. Great point. All right. Well, on behalf of Brian and myself, we really appreciate you guys coming today. Uh, we're at booth 208 if you want to hear any more. And, uh, We'll put this presentation out. We have the full demonstration available online as well if you guys want to take that back and show it to your folks back at home. So thanks again for your time. And don't forget to fill out your, uh, your reviews within the application.